Hi, Brad from Rainwise. Just going to go over a quick uh, Rainwise.net tutorial. So this is the base Rainwise.net page, not affiliated with anyone's weather station. It is the main page that you will come to. Brief outline. This is going to be your login up the top. If you are already logged in, we'll say logged in as, and then your name or the name of the account holder in this same location, just as a heads up. Um, so here it's going to outline what you can see from a pro account. So that also means whatever is on here, you will not have if you do not have a pro account. Here are some of the partner services that we link up to. Um, this is, like I said, just the, the base page. Um, and then this is going to bring you through the, the standard registration process. So that's the normal one. And after you have gone through and actually um, dealt with all of the registration process, that would then bring you to something like this. Um, so this is, let's go to one of my other stations. This is your standard dashboard. So this is my test stations, logged in as me. This is the URL that I would distribute to other people if I were looking to have them have access to my dashboard page. Um, if you have Pro, you can go ahead and actually give them access to other things like the graphs and whatnot. I just turned it on, as you can see. So there isn't really much in the way for graphing, but um, that is the, the general overview. Um, and so here you're going to have everything that you have identified as one of your station sensors. Um, standard ones are going to be humidity, wind direction, temperature, dew point, pressure, precipitation, and inside temp. Inside temp is dictated by your um, actual receiving device just as a point of reference. And then just a little about your weather station and you can also link up any photos that you want. Um, we do have an iOS app and an Android app uh, that you can download and use. Both have uh, similar credentials that you would need to use to log in. Um, over here, we have my local forecast that is dictated by my latitude and longitude that I have determined in my settings. We'll make our way down there. So next page is going to be graph. This is a pro feature. So you can just break it down by 24 hours, 7 days, or 30 days. When you do this, Items are averaged. There are only certain amount of data points, right? So depending upon how consistently your station reports, i.e. once every minute, once every five minutes, once every 15 minutes, once every hour, you're going to have averages for those time frames. You know, they're not going to have uh, 30 data points for every minute for wind direction. It's an averaged wind direction. So as you elongate the graph, you're actually going to have a more averaged value. So this is actually a bad example because I don't have historical data on it. But essentially what I'm saying is the graph's going to smooth out and you're not going to see all of the more finite points. Um, so your highs won't be as high and your low won't see as, seem as low. This is usually more obvious when you go beyond that seven day mark. Okay, so when you go to 30 days, that's where it really smooths everything out. Like I said, this is a bad example. Um, but that's just a brief overview of it. Um, so next thing we're going to do is actually custom detail graph. So I do this for one main reason. Super, super useful. Um, I like to correlate two things, you know, whether it be temp and humidity, and I like to, to plot them to an extent. But the most important thing from a user perspective is going to be that. And I usually do battery and none. And so it's at 6.2 volts, which is not that phenomenal. But what I like to do is look over seven days. I really should put a better version. Oh, that's awful. These are all test stations that I have, and I don't use them all consistently. And I do not recall if any of them are online at the moment. Just 2299. Yep. All right. Well, either way. <clears throat> If I were to go do this and check my battery voltage remotely, because I don't want to go on my roof, I would select battery in the first column and then none in the second column. And then I would span it out over seven days. And what I should see is something that looks like a heartbeat almost, you know, flat spike, flat spike, 
flat spike. Don't judge me on the my spikes there. Um, and that's how it should appear. And you should have about one bull swing between high and low on, on a given day. Uh, and the reason why you look at seven days is so that you can get kind of an idea of what it looks like. Typically, one day as a data point is not useful. Um, these are your reports. This is going to give you a brief synopsis. Yet again, these are average to values. Not everything is average, but things are. Like, obviously, the humidity wasn't consistently 29 for that whole hour. It was averaged based on what was there. It might have been 28 and then 31. Um, so you can break that down by daily, monthly, yearly. This is also a pro feature. Then you can select by the date. Downloads. Full download is a standard use and anyone can use it, but it's literally every data point that you have maxing out at 43,000 records. Um, so most IP100s go minute to minute. So when they're doing that, that means 43,000 minutes worth of records. That doesn't span that long. So the enhanced download gives you the chance to go ahead and break up the interval. Even if you're reporting every minute, you can put it in 10 minute segments. Um, and I know a lot of uh, agencies that, that go ahead and use that format and will do either a 60 minute or a 15 or a 30 and break it down and they can pull, you know, a couple months worth of data at that point and make life easy for themselves. You can break out the date range as you see fit and then you hit download. It's going to give you the option to download in the CSV. Well, not the option. That's what it will default to rather. Uh, next, we have alarms. So as we go through this, um, basically, if you were a grower, as an example, I would pick temperature, not temperature one or temperature two. Those are going to be for um, soil moisture, uh, sorry, soil temp, things like that. Maybe you have a back module temperature on there. But I'm going to pick the threshold and I'm going to pick let's say 34 degrees. So that's my, my threshold. So anything below 34 degrees, once it hits that 35 dropping to 34, or rather 34 to 33, it will go ahead and uh, trigger this alarm. So time to trip. Do I want that immediate or do I maybe want a 15 minute delay? So that means 15 minutes of this condition being in a yes format. So is it below that 34 degrees? Yes. Okay, for 15 minutes, yes. Okay, then I want that to go ahead and alert me. Time to reset is literally breaks in between these alarms. So if you have 15 minutes and the wrong parameter, it's gonna be paying you every 15 minutes. Um, so usually I'll do something like two, three, four, six hours um, just to be on the safe side. And again, it's gonna depend on your situation. So I'd hit save at that point. It shows me the alarm. Now the subscribers. You can put as many subscribers as you want on here. So a lot of organizations have multiple subscribers. But the problem is with every alarm you put on there, every subscriber is going to be hit for every one of those alarms. So there's a certain level of customization that you, you can do, and there's a certain level that you can't do. So if I were to put in a subscriber, put notification, email, name, Brad. Email, you could also do a uh, mobile number. You would do probably text at that point, which is one of your other options. Um, so at that point, red at realize.com, HTML or plain. I don't need the HTML. I just want plain. Boom, saved. So now I am subscribed to this alarm. Okay. Status. This means that it's not going off currently. And you can enable and disable if you had multiple, I would just click that. Let's say I wasn't worried about the temperature at this time frame, and I was only worried about wind gusts above 30 miles an hour. I would disable this one and then enable the other one. Um, so that's, that's the basic alarms page. And then we are going to go on to, <laughs> this is, um, all the breakdown for my station. So this is where you get a lot of your base information. So this is serial number, act number for your actual 
IP100, which is on the underside of your IP100, you generally don't need that again, um, except for when you talk to me um, for your IP100. Your URL is literally what people will type in in the beginning. When we were on this weather page, it's at rainwise.net forward slash weather forward slash welcome 2299. I can make that whatever I want. You can't have duplicates though. Um, so let's say I wanted helicopter pants as the name. So it'd be rainwise.net forward slash weather forward slash helicopter pants. That's fine. But if I have three stations, it needs to be helicopter pants one, two, and three kind of thing. Um, you need to have some differentiation between. Uh, upload rate with IP100, you can set those uh, to pretty much whatever you want. Uh, but that is going to be the frequency of your data. So if you're looking for more consistent or more accurate data, you obviously want the upload rate lower. Um, radar or satellite is going to be on your base page. It's telling me what kind of map I want here. Um, hence, current radar satellite. So back to the settings. <clears throat> Time zone is very important. Um, if you adjust that, you're gonna have gaps in your data because it needs to catch up to what the actual time is. So let's say I set that back three hours, then I'm gonna have three hours in a gap of data. Uh, physical location is more so an identifier for yourself. The actual address is obvious um, for whatever your station is. All that's just important. So this is going to be what dictates your actual forecast. It's not specifically coming from your weather station, but this is what dictates it. Um, so then we go on the weather page. So weather page, your page title. This is this. Whatever I put here is what's going to pop up here. It's not the same as your URL. So in here, you can do all types of interesting things to go ahead and um, basically let somebody play around with, you know, whatever links you want to put in. Um, maybe you want to highlight another site for yourself. Um, maybe you're a governmental agency and you want to, you know, have the .gov pages linked on here. What, whatever you want to do, that is A-OK -okay to do. I suggest you messing around with it. I am not insanely well-versed in all this. Um, so unit preference, imperial or metric, um, that's going to populate on this. You can also use this function, which that's going to be obviously metric and that's imperial so that's the quick toggle for that is up here um back to so this is the important part if you're sharing your url this is what you want to click on more often than not so that if you do have pro somebody can go through and look at these graphs and look at the reports and download data if they want to i'm just trying to rush through because i have two more minutes of video and i'm done um so here is the offset you can do, this is very important here. So if you wanna offset your barometer, this is where you do it. Um, same thing with your inside temp and your outside temp. Now, obviously that's applicable for all stations. This is mainly IP100s we're talking about here. But here's the really important thing. You can dial in your IP100 right here via this um, IP address and you need to be connected to the same network, otherwise you will get a not found page. So then we have sensors. If you click these on and you do not have these sensors on your station, you will still get values. They will just not be correct. Um, so please be aware of what you have on your station before you go ahead and click these on. Um, example, telemet battery voltage should only be on units that have telemetry devices. Pro options. Um, this is literally just parameters you would set for whatever you want it for heating degree days, cooling degree days, and growing degree days. And partner services, this is where you link up to things like weather underground, ambient, CWAP, WECUS, all that good stuff. And then contact info is contact info. This is also where you're going to change your password. And then subscriptions is where you're going to add to or extend or rather purchase or extend your pro subscription. And it also tells you when it's gonna expire, which mine expires in 2027. Um, that should be it. Anytime you do any adjustments in here, just make sure you hit the save button. So let's say I changed something in partner services, need to hit that save button. All right, thanks guys.